Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're ready to take a look and see what happens to the tension when the object is not simply hanging there, not moving, or moving at a constant velocity upward or downward. Now we're going to take a look at the situation where the object actually accelerates upward or accelerates downward. In each case, we'll use a free body diagram to support our thinking. Let's start with the middle situation. The velocity is zero. The object is simply hanging there, not moving. We can say that using Newton's second law, the net force on the object must equal the mass times acceleration. So if we draw a free body diagram around our object, we then realize that there's the force of gravity pulling downward, and I probably should have left myself a little bit more room. But let me erase this. I'll get back to that in just a moment. The weight of the object, mg, pulling up, and then we have the tension on the cable pulling up on the object. So again, to that equation we just had, that the, the Newton's second law tells us that the net force on the object is equal to the mass times acceleration. In this case, the acceleration is zero, and the net force is the tension pulling upward minus the weight pulling downward. Tension minus the weight equals the mass times acceleration, which is zero in this case. That means that the tension minus the weight equals zero, or the tension equals the weight. But what would we do in the case that the object is actually accelerating upward? Again, what we do here is we can realize that if we draw a free body diagram around our object, and we look at all the forces acting on it, we realize again that the weight of gravity is pulling down, mg, and that the tension in the cable is pulling upward with a force equal to the tension. The concept of Newton's second law is exactly the same as before. F net, the net force on the object, equals the mass times acceleration. But in this case, the acceleration is not zero, it's in the upward direction. The net force on the object will be the tension minus the weight of the object equals the mass times acceleration. The tension is in the upward direction, the weight is in the downward direction. And since the acceleration is in the upward direction, that means that the tension must be greater than the weight of the object. Because if it's not, we cannot have a positive quantity here. Notice that the acceleration is a positive direction. That means that T minus mg must also be a positive quantity. Which means that the tension must be equal to the weight. If I bring the mg over to the other side, it becomes positive. Plus the ma. With other words, the tension in the cable is equal to the force required to hold the object against gravity plus the additional force required to make it accelerate at the acceleration equal to A. So the tension is the sum of the weight of the object plus the force required to accelerate the object at acceleration A. Now let's take a look at our third situation. Here we see the object with acceleration downward. Again, we can draw a free body diagram. We identify all the forces acting on the object, and again, it's the same two forces. It's the weight of gravity, or the force of gravity pulling it down, and the tension pulling upward on the, direct, on the object. Again, we use the equation F net equals MA. The net force on the object equals the mass times acceleration. In this case, we know the acceleration is downward, so we have a negative acceleration here. The net force will be the tension minus the weight equals the mass times acceleration. Now we have to be careful here. The acceleration is a negative quantity. That means that the weight here, the weight of the object, must be greater than the tension, otherwise this would not be a negative quantity. So mg is larger than the tension. So what we can say here is that the tension is equal to, when we bring the mg across the other side, the weight of the object minus the mass times acceleration. The reason why we make it minus is because we know that the acceleration is a negative quantity here. That means that the tension equals the weight of the object minus the force required to give it the negative acceleration. In the limit, let's say that the negative acceleration equals the acceleration due to gravity. Then mg minus mg would be equal to zero and the tension would be zero. In other words, if we were to cut the string so there's nothing hanging on to the object, the object would be accelerating downward at acceleration equal to minus 9.8 meters per second squared, which is equal to 
g and therefore the right side would go to zero and the tension then also would go to zero which makes sense when we cut the string so we can see that if the object is accelerating downward the tension will be less than the weight of the object if the object is, is accelerating upward the tension will be greater than the weight of the object greater by the quantity ma and here it will be less by the quantity ma if acceleration is a negative quantity then we subtract this from the weight and we get the tension of the object and that's how we can see the difference between when an object is simply hanging there on a string when an object is being accelerated upward or when an object is being accelerated downward. On the next video we'll do a more systematic explanation of how we do that with the forces and directions so you can see that the sign actually does work. Here we just have an intuitive feel for it. On the next video we'll work that problem out where we show the exact form of how to do that with free body diagrams and the concept of the different directions and the sign associated with it. And that's how that's done.